Well, look, you can't say that Joe Biden hasn't created new jobs. We now have the illegal immigrant migrant influencer as a job, but it looks like ICE, unfortunately, has arrested the illegal immigrant. How horribly racist of them. I talked about this dude, or I don't know, maybe it was somebody else. Maybe there's multiple different illegal immigrant influencers. The last guy I had saw, he was bragging about squatting in people's homes and trying to tell other people the strategy behind the idea of squatting and seizing homes just because the liberal laws in the major cities when it comes to squatters are so ridiculous, you have to go to court to kick them out. But yeah, apparently he got arrested Look at this, we've got Biden getting heckled by Palestinian protesters during Biden's big uh, campaign fundraiser. By the way, I just saw this graph, the 2020 donations. I'm going to throw this up. Oh, look at all those giant corporations. Eat the rich. They're all terrible, capitalist, evil, billion-dollar entities, and they all donate to the Democrats. But no, the Democrats hate capitalism. They hate all those giant corporations. They'll just take their money and get campaign ads jammed down our throat from Biden. It'll be fun to see that again. Biden does, and the, and the Democrats do spend much more money and get more money when it comes to campaigns. But no, they hate billionaires. They'll take all the billionaires' money and they'll get more money from billionaires but they hate the billionaires, guys. They hate capitalism. Yeah, they're going to take money from them. It's all total hypocrisy, obviously. And Biden, when it comes to Palestine, Israel, it's a horrible issue for the Democrats in general because you've got the ridiculous far-left people who support Palestine 100%, and then you do have other people on the left that do support Israel. And that's why Biden is almost like giving money to both of them, playing both sides, it really is a lose-lose no matter what. But how about Biden, Bill Clinton, and Obama, the little elitist reunion doing some type of campaign event, and apparently they raised $26 million. And then look at this. This is when, like, I'm 99% sure the person that put this flag together, they've got to be trolling. There is no way that you could put those flags together and, th like, like, it's got to be somebody in disguise that's trolling these people. I mean, it's just, it is unbelievable We've got a new poll. What do you think the most important problem is facing the country? Yeah, this is terrible news for Biden. Immigration, 28%. The number one problem, the government poor leadership, which has to obviously do with Biden. That is his current administration, 19%. The economy, high cost of living. So the top four things, all negatives for the current administration. And then you can see the abortion issue, which was a huge winning selling point for the Democrats. And I think it's very important people realize when everyone says, well, the polls were wrong in 2022, the Democrats got great timing with the abortion issue and when it came up and they were able to fear monger it into performing very well in the midterms. They're not going to have that again in 2024. Nobody cares. Look, it's at 3%. And then war in the Middle East, that's good news for Biden because who do you support? I mean, you've got part of your party that supports Israel, the other part that supports Palestine. It's a lose-lose no matter what, but that's only at 2%. But the top four issues right now, this is 100% what the Republicans want to do. Make the election an immigration problem. And if you're the Democrats, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if you play hardball and go really against illegal immigration and say, no, we realize Americans view this as a huge issue. It's a serious negative for Biden. We're going to stop it completely eliminate the illegal immigration going into the 2024 election, maybe change your tune this summer. If they do that, they're just admitting that Trump was right. And by their own definition, they would be considering themselves to be racist because you're not allowing people into the country. We know it's ridiculous, but they're in a lose-lose. They're either going to continue to go soft on immigration and it's going to be this big problem. The only deflection that I've seen these people make is, oh, you're just overhyping the immigration problem because they don't have a solution to it. The solution would be admitting Trump and the Republicans are right that you need to take this seriously and actually have a border, especially when you're a first world country bordered by a third world country. They don't want to do that. So they just say, oh, it's overblown. That's the only, you know, retort that they have. There's no actual logical solution to it.
because they know the solution would be admitting Trump is right on the border and that you do need a legitimate border, especially when you're bordered by a third world country. And obviously the government poor leadership, that is very negative for Biden as well. We also do have this. How about Ron DeSantis making a comeback? Who would you like to be Donald Trump's VP? You know what? Time heals all wounds. We remember DeSantis even back you know, it, February, January, MAGA, they all disliked him. He was coming out against Trump. Obviously, he was running against him and he was getting destroyed in the polls. But now DeSantis plus 48 in terms of favorability, possibly going to be Donald Trump's running mate. Although I haven't heard a lot on that. At this point, I would expect it to be maybe Carson or Tim Scott. I know Tim Scott is the current favorite when it comes to the VP. And then... It wouldn't be a campaign cycle without Rachel Maddow fake crying. Apparently, Rachel Maddow... Like, this stuff is so scripted. Okay, so MSNBC decides to go out and hire Ronna McDaniel. So, Rachel Maddow, I guess they decided to just not consult her at all. And Rachel Maddow had, I guess, for part of one of her shows, she came out there... And she did the thing where she like tries to drum up tears, but it's just all like fake hysterical crying where she's like, I can't believe we would hire Ronna McDet. Can you not talk about this behind the scenes? And of course she could talk about it behind the scenes, but she doesn't do it. She does it on air because it's all performance. And she's like, oh my God, it's so bad. She's an election den denier. Ronna McDaniel is one of the most boring people in politics. And Rachel Maddow has to cry and, 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 oh, she's Ava Braun. She's the most evil. It's just like this stuff is so, it literally is the boy who cried wolf. Nobody cares. You've cried for 10 different things. We know you think Trump is terrible. The, I guess that's why he's winning independence by 20 points right now in the polls. It doesn't matter. The influence of mainstream media is getting smaller and smaller and smaller when it comes to the general election and the influence that they can have on voters, especially now with Elon Musk taking over X and really changing the social media landscape. So Rachel Mano comes out, fake cries. Oh, and then she says during her show, she was trying to make it about, oh, Ronna McDaniel supported Trump and he doesn't like democracy and he's an election denier. Lady, your news organization denied the 2016 election for multiple years and said that Russia stole it. It's funny how the words election denier never were uttered once by mainstream media when Democrats denied the election from 2017 through 2018. The only thing that shut it down was the Mueller report, which was a multi, multi-million dollar investigation that was a complete nothing burger, MSNBC, CNN, wall-to-wall -wall coverage during Trump's first two years. The only way that a racist fascist like that could be elected, it had to have been through Russia somehow interfering with the election, but the words election denier were never used then. It's interesting to see the phrasing of these things in terms of the Democrats denying it and then the Republicans denying it. Uh, so either way, she came out and cried and, and Ronna McDaniel is the worst person in history. It's all terrible. Yes, Republicans are the worst thing ever. Our country, guys, this is the thing you have to understand. And, and Rachel Maddow was so right on this. I was watching her last night. I just, I, you know, I record every episode. I watch it back five or six times. She came out and she's like, listen, guys, I like if Trump gets elected, I, the world's going to explode. Like, I think the sun is just going to crash into earth and we're all going to die if Trump gets reelected. It, it's legitimate. It seems uh, very obvious. Trump is so evil. He can magnetically attract the sun to earth and just melt all of us. It's going to be so sad, guys. That's why you need to vote for Joe Biden. He's Uncle Joe. He might not be able to talk, but who cares? Donald Trump is a terrible fascist. So vote for Joe Biden. Either way, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.